。欢迎大家来到杨兄狗逼店，就让我来带大家一起去聊时事吧。哈喽，大家好，欢迎大家回到杨兄聊时事。这次杨兄非常有幸能够邀请到 YB 赛沙迪母大的创办人来到杨兄的节目，接受杨兄的访问啊！哇哦，跟大家讲一句实话，杨兄其实在第一次改朝换代在那个服务当中，把当然 fellow 手跟 YB 呢曾经有一段交情。而且虽然讲杨兄与 YB 的一些议题上意见是不合的，但是整体来讲，杨兄还是尊敬他的。这次能够非常感谢他哦，能够接受杨兄的采访啊！这次杨兄呢，其实对他针对的采访问的问题都非常的犀利，包括他的法庭案子啊，为什么？我要分散团结政府选票，还有为什么只占西门强区去竞选啊？这些问题呢？这一次杨雄来呢，就是来跟他进行自介啊咨询的。究竟他能不能接住杨雄的招呢？杨雄也非常的好奇啊。所以这一次的杨雄访问的内容呢，请大家追随杨雄脚步，一起到血沙地的这里呢，对他进行咨询吧。走 ，Let's go。福大作为马来西亚的第三势力，只是周选上阵十九个首一级，而他的创办人塞沙迪呢，饱受各方的批评，包括分散团结政府选票、法庭案件，还有只在西门的强区上阵，所以很多人才说福大是来搅局的嘛。而这次杨雄专访系列呢，也会对 YB 谢沙迪提出这些犀利的提问，不知道 YB 谢沙迪会怎么回答呢？请大家追随杨雄的镜头来看杨雄如何拷问福大创办人塞沙迪吧。哈喽，大家好，欢迎大家回到杨兄聊时事。这次杨兄非常的有幸啊，能够邀请到 YB Shake Sunny， 耶。Hello， 大家好，欢迎各位一百零二金耶。哇，谁谁谁 ，bro， 你 knows how many languages？ 啊，有 can 啦 ，I try，I try, I try.、Uh,。Malaysia is a multilingual country， and that's our strength。哇哦 ，OK， so basically， 呃、uh, ，today we are going coming here to ask tough questions 啊、uh. ，Are you ready？ I am ready。OK， firstly， you know people don't really know what is Muda and what does Muda stand for。So could you just tell us what does Muda stand for and what is Muda？ Yeah， Muda is a truly diverse multiracial multireligious party， which focuses on。Improvement of policies, building strong democratic institutions and practices, but most importantly, a country which wants to serve to make Malaysia a developed country, one with world-class education system, public transportation, healthcare, but which is driven by data-driven policy making, not just by race, religion, or by sentiment alone. It must be based on data-driven. It must be based on strong political institutions which supersede. Political personalities and hyperpartisanship. That's how you make Malaysia a developed country. But that sounds like you are quite similar to what Pakatan is offering right now. But what's your difference between Muda and Pakatan then? I mean, you can ask、uh, the very sincere and honest question: Are the reforms being implemented today? Okay. The same coalition which said that they will transition to a needs-based education model today is still maintaining the old education model. The same coalition which said they will remove draconian laws. Outdated laws today are keeping the same draconian laws. The same coalition which said that they will push for decentralisation of power, more checks and balances. Today, actually, centralising more power, okay, less checks and balances. So, to be honest, Muda is here to be the voice of conscience for the people, to be the proper checks and balances. Because PN, to be very frank,、mm -hmm. will not talk about these issues.、Mm -hmm. PN also wants centralisation of power. PN also wants to promote the old political system of patronage. Muda is here to change Malaysia for good, to make Malaysia a developed country. But talking about the voice of the conscious, but what is your manifesto? People don't really know what are you guys offering. Could you just tell us in brief and short and concise about what are you offering to the you know residents of every area con Muda is contesting in? I mean, to be very frank, we are only contesting in 19 out of 240 seats. All over, the, being, all over the country. Yep,、okay. 19 out of 240. It's not even 10 percent. But this is our first step、uh, to really invest in Malaysia's future for the next 20 years. Ideally, we want to see. A Malaysia in which our education system provides equal opportunities, not equal outcomes,、uh, to all. We want a system in which, whether it's on healthcare, public transportation,、uh, we build decisions based on data decision,、um, a data-driven、uh, decision-making process. We want to build strong democratic institutions. For example, the issue of PJD Link, right,、okay. a multi-billion-dollar project for Muda. We're not anti-development, but we are for hyper-transparency. That means you cannot hide things behind the Official Secrets Act. I mean, today. A private agreement is being hidden behind the Official Secrets Act. We want for this issue to be debated and voted in the one undangan negeri, not just decided by the hands of the Menteri Besar or a few ex-cos which are political appointment、uh, appointed. We want to ensure that there are local council elections,、okay. so there's proper transparency and accountability, not just those controlled by the political elites. We want to abolish the pension system, so that in the end, politicians politicians who join politics really wants to do it for the genuine public good, not. Just because I join, I win immediately. I get a lifetime pension. We want to reform political appointments to ensure that it's open up to the public, so that even the smartest and brightest individuals can apply to become head of GLCs and agencies. 
We want to ensure that in the end, our education system is one which is of world class. But in order for us to reach there, I think in the end, it is about investing in strong institutions because institutions outlast Said Sadiq. Institutions outlast Muda, PH, PAS, whichever party. Right. That's why we focus on institutions over personalities. But you know that you have to be in government to do all this thing, True. right? And these things that many people have been criticizing Muda candidates for having no experience mm. and they are just going out there to offer you no know, empty checks. What is your response to that? I mean, just look at, uh, at our candidates. They may be young, but they're very experienced in your own respective fields. You okay. have people like Dobi Chu, mm. who has led an NGO, who has been a vice president or president of different NGOs and community organizations who have already received awards, not just locally, but internationally. Uh, we have, uh, for example, uh, someone who worked uh, in, in, uh, in, in the banking industry for more than 23 years while mothering five different children. We have people from multiple different backgrounds. We have Dr. Siva, who's the son of a, a Putu Mayam seller, very underprivileged family, but today runs his own businesses oh, is, 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 and, and is also a PhD holder. We have people like Al Hafiz, you know, uh, a young uh, architect and engineer who has years of experience also working in multiple different industries who can speak three or four different languages, who's fluent, including in Mandarin, while being a strong Malay. I mean, we are truly a multiracial, multi-religious, uh, policy-centered front. And if you look at Muda, I think we are the only party which has filled up more than 50% of women candidates and really representing the true spirit of Malaysia. But still the same, people are saying that it's too young and because you have no experience other than professional experience, you have no experience in the government. That is the main point. So how do you address that? I mean, when there's a lack of an experience, you give the opportunity so that in the end, they can build up the experience. This election will not change the federal government. I'll give a very specific example. Okay. Areas where Muda is contesting at. Okay. Federal government is still PHBN. Mm. State government is still PHBN. Mm. The Ahli Parliament at Kawasan is still PHBN. Ahli Majlis is still PHBN. Ketua Kampung is still PHBN. Top to bottom, right. PHBN. Don't you want an alternative so that when PHBN does not listen to you, they are arrogant, they no longer want to fulfill their promises. There's Muda there to be the check and balance to be your voice of conscience. That in the end, when they fail you, we can push them to ensure that their commitment for reforms are followed up. Because in these areas, PN will not make much of a dent. Okay. Right? In last election, PN lost their deposits in this area. So when Muda pushes, for example, recently on PJ dealing, okay. that's when government responds. When Muda pushes for asset declarations, that's when the Prime Minister responds. When Muda pushes on issues, big issues, but important issues, like the need to transition to a needs-based education model so that the poor, underprivileged Chinese and Indians are well represented. That's where government will need to respond. The point of the matter is, we need an alternative voice of conscience to ensure that there's check and balance in areas where Pakatan Harapan and BN may see this as their safe deposit. Mm. Do not allow any politician and parties to treat you as a mere number, as a mere statistic, and as a safe deposit. We are here to ensure that there's genuine competition, so that there is a race to the top to make Malaysia a great place for all Malaysians. But you know, talking about Barisan and Pakatan, right? Mm. And people have been criticizing your party mm. for contesting and this time to split the world of the Pabaduan. So please, could you respond to that criticism? Okay. I mean, let's be frank and f look at data. Places in which Muda contesting are areas in which Perikata Nasional mm. lost their deposit. These are areas where no one dared to challenge Pakatan Harapan before. I mean, the very area where we are having this live uh, session. At, okay. I mean, PN in last election got less than 3%. I mean, what vote splitting can they be when PN got less than 3%? But people are taking these areas, multiracial, moderate voters, lightly, because they see you as safe deposit, as a statistic, as areas where no one can contest. That's why when Muda contest, no, this is ours. Who are you to contest in our area? Hey, since when is votes a monopoly? They already control from top to bottom. The member of parliament will still be from, from, from the same coalition. But we are saying, give us a chance to be your voice of conscience so that you are not treated as a mere safe deposit. And in the end, it is impossible to split votes in areas where Perikatan National lost their deposit. No one has challenged these areas. We know it is an impossible and Herculean task. But we think it is important to invest today so that we can be the proper check and balance for the people. But here comes the question, because now it's different, because of the green wave, right? Mm. And because if that happens, PN, because of your interference, mm. making the Pabano to lose their seat, so how do you responsible for that? As, as, as I shared, just follow at numbers. There's a green wave in last election, but in urban areas, in areas where Muda are contesting it, the green wave only reached 3%. So I mean, um, 
I mean, I, I, I don't want to disrespect people from PN, but that's the reality of things. And will people from PN talk about proper checks and balances, decentralization of power, important, crucial, yet sensitive reforms on our education system? Will they talk about the need to abolish the pension scheme for political elites? How is it fair that a civil servant needs to work for 30 years before he or she is entitled for a pension, but a politician just getting to office gets a lifetime worth of pension? They won't talk about it. Muda will talk about it. Will PN talk about proper transparency when it comes to big multi-billion dollar projects or when it comes to de-gazetting forests, okay. right? They won't. But Muda must be the party to do so. But why be? You know you could have achieved all of this with the Pakatan government. You could have been inside the government to do all of, things, mm. all of this thing. But why do you choose to come out? Um, I think on that, you have to ask friends in Pakatan Harapan. We were not even allowed in, mind you. Uh, and Can you explain more about the stories behind it? No, because we applied to join Pakatan three times um, since like a year ago. <laughs> it's not something new. Um, we worked with them in state elections, in the federal election. Uh, and we even tried to meet up with them more than three times just by sending a letter multiple times. But I think maybe because they're too comfortable with Barista National and they're, they're not receptive of criticism, constructive criticism. I mean... When I join politics, I'm not here for power. I'm here to really change Malaysia for good. But when I talk about corruption scandals, which they talked about before election, and now after winning, they forgot about it. When I talk about consistent principled politics, something which we talked about together with the same language before election, but now they forgot it. Mm. I will not change my tune. Because to me, it is about principled politics changing Malaysia, not just about power and contracts. Okay, talking about principle, talking about corruption cases, right? Mm. Because you are also involved in one of the cases. Mm. So how could you say that you are cleaner than the others? And how do you respond to this criticism? I mean, just look at my track record, right? I mean, uh, in 2020, when there was a change in government, I was offered a ministerial position. Not many in Pakatan Harapan can say that. I was offered, I rejected. Then I was offered to become chairman of GLCs, which mind you pay more than ministers. I rejected. Then came the threats towards me, not just me, but my family members. I fought it. If you look at even senior leaders in Pakatan Harapan then who jumped, right? There are senior top leaders who jumped when they were threatened. I didn't. I fought it in court until today. And mind you, in contrast to top leaders in government today, I never once postponed my case. My case now is just waiting for a decision because I'm not afraid. There's a term which you use, berani kerana benar. If you think that you're in the right, fight it out. Let the court decide. Unlike them today who have postponed the case and now is requesting for the cases to be dropped. If this had happened la under last government, there would be riots on the streets. But today, when the top leader of the country requests for criminal cases to be dropped... Did they? Yes. is in court today and they've requested for the Attorney General to drop the case. So that's why you need Muda in because when we are in, we will be the voice of conscience and vocal to ensure that the same hands of justice which work on the average Malaysian citizen also works on the top political elites, not one which is based on double standards. Okay, let's change the topic to our about this election, all right? So you choose to work with PSM. I'm sure that you have your reasons. Could you tell our audience why do you choose to work with PSM? We want to work with parties who genuinely believe in service, who genuinely believes in building a truly multiracial, multi-religious Malaysia, one which focuses on good policies. And if you look at PSM, despite losing multiple elections, they continue their track record of service. They continue speaking for the underprivileged. And they continue to focus on building a truly multiracial Malaysia, no matter how difficult it may get. So I think for us, there is an alignment of interests and values. While there may be disagreements, we work on those disagreements and we don't get clouded because there are more commonalities mm. in moving Malaysia forward. But still, there's a taboo about socialism. You know that many, of, especially conservative Malay voters, wouldn't accept that. Mm. Don't you, aren't you worried about them, you know, taking away your words and making you, you know, to fight not so good in this election? So that's why, I mean, don't just look at terms, at big terms. I mean, in the end, I think there is an agreement that we need to support underprivileged Malaysians, the working class, ensure that there is equity in the distribution of wealth it's not about destroying capitalism or taking away profits to the point that the country cannot grow. But it is about sharing the economic pie. For example, I was with friends in PSM mm. and I'm part of the select committee in charge of education. I saw them how they spoke up for, let's say, guards and cleaners in schools who don't get the minimum wage which they were owed. I mean, is that really that bad? I mean, it is our responsibility to speak up for the underprivileged, especially when the laws have changed. So what we are looking at is really to speak up for the underprivileged while ensuring that Malaysia becomes a developed country. See, again, you know, why don't you choose 
in your strategy, why don't you choose to contest in PN areas and majority of the areas that you are contesting are in Pakatan's very strong areas. Why is that so? We are also contesting in Trunganu, mind you, a PN super stronghold and we're fielding our general there, the top, our top leader in Muda in the state election is fielded in the toughest pass seat in which again, Pakatan Harapan lost their deposit there. But we're sending our general. But some may be asking, oh, but then you should be contesting in all seats. Mm. We are very realistic. We don't have the kind of money which they have. They are in control of federal and state government. They have billionaires backing them. They fly in helicopters. They can do big charamas and invite huge celebrities to perform where they have to pay so much money. We don't have all of that. We start small. And the reality is out of 240 seats, we can only start by contesting in 19 seats. But every vote which we get, we will not waste it because a vote for Muda mm. is a vote for accountability, checks and balances, and a vote for conscience. So that people in Pakatan Harapan will know after state elections that they have to fast track the reform agenda to remember what got them into power and to not treat your vote okay. as a safe deposit. Could you tell us what is your biggest challenge in the state election? You know, Muda is contesting in the states. I mean, this is the first time that we're standing on our own and we know it is not easy. Politics is never easy, especially when we're young, new, fresh, and we don't have the patronage structures like other political parties with big funders. We don't have that. But what we don't have in those kind of areas, we have a lot of ideas, policy know-hows, people who don't expect much when it comes to money, but they want to volunteer because they believe in that dream of making Malaysia a developed country. So this is an investment for Malaysia's future. So if you ask me, mm. will the road ahead be tough? Yes. But our hearts are in the right place because this is our investment in our beloved country's future. All right, coming to the last part of the interview, could you just tell us the vision of Muda and your vision for Malaysia? I want Malaysia to become a developed country. I want Malaysia to have strong political institutions which transcend hyper-partisanship or political personalities. I want Malaysia to reach a point that even if when I lose to my political opponents, I feel happy because I know our institutions will safeguard the interests of Malaysia, not just the parties who control Putrajaya. That's what a developed country is about. The developed country looks beyond who wins elections, looks beyond which party wins because the institutions are resilient, independent and strong because those institutions will ensure that we have a world-class education system a world-class healthcare system, public transportation. We invest in future industries. We have jobs which pay our graduates well. They, that is a truly developed Malaysia. But most importantly, Malaysia in which all Malaysians, regardless of race and religion, feel that this land is our home together and forever. So the last thing, what do you want to tell our audience? Why should we vote for Muda in this election? Do give a chance to Muda. We will ensure that no one takes your votes lightly see you as a statistic or as a safe deposit. Because the fact of the matter is PN will not give checks and balances in, those, in these areas. We will. And we are very realistic. In the end, areas where we can test, the Member of Parliament will still be from Pakatan Harapan and BN. Federal government, same. State government, same. Ali Majlis, same. Kerta Kampung, the same. Break that monopoly by giving Muda a chance so that we can be your voice of conscience, the alternative, to ensure that there's proper checks and balances. Rest assured, we are loud, we are vocal, and we are principled. And we will be by your side all the way. All right. Thank you, YB. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, all, the, all the best in your campaign. It is a fruitful discussion. So here comes to the end of the program. So today, uh, Sheikh